Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, I'm talking to you guys, but also good morning to those who are at home um, um, watching uh, our, our worship service right now. And um, it's good to see you all. Um, and um, just want to invite you guys right now that put your heart, you know, on things about, you know, not on things, you know, on earth as we study the passage in Colossians. And I'm going to read this scripture from the book of Romans. And if I can have the slide up there, that would be great. Um, and it's, it's quite a, a little longer passage, but, um, but I want to ask you to meditate on it as well, too, if it's all possible. Um, it's from Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 11. For those who are in accord with the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who are in accord with the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the Spirit is life and peace, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And this is um, found in Book of Romans. And, um, and I hope that uh, it's a lot, but what it says is that our mindset on things about because we are no longer belonging to this world, the Holy Spirit lives in us, dwell in us. And if you, you're a believer, you believe in Christ, that it's a guarantee. And we ourselves cannot set our mind on things about on our own, but through the power of Spirit, we are able to. So let's pray and ask God to, to motivate us to remember why we are here, why, we, why he desires to set our minds on things above but not on earth, and what is the reason. Maybe you have wrestled that within yourself um, as we pray, as we worship God. God, I thank you for your word. Your word reveals the truth in us, the reality of our minds, the reality of mankind that's sinful, that it's hateful towards you because we do not naturally belong to you because of our sin. But yet I praise you because of Jesus Christ, because he, not only he died on the cross to redeem our sin, but of his resurrection that we believe that, that it's life in you because of his resurrection that we can rejoice because we know there is hope with the resurrection. We will not know what it means for us Christians to live. We just aimlessly live. And so I thank you for allowing this to come true. And I pray that we will remember this awesome, awesome relationship that we have with you because of our, of our faith in Christ, that may you indwell in us and move our minds so that we focus on you, that it's above all things of this world, and that we learn to, to love you and live for you because of that hope that we can only find in Jesus Christ alone. We praise you in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, um, for those who you would love to, uh, I, I invite you to stand with us to sing, but if you want to sit and um, meditate as you say it's fine you know um worship is not because you know however you ought to do but it's you know what the spirit uh, guides you so um let's sing let's sing the first song stronger the king 
treasure that we have found there's no other treasures that in this world can be as near as you because you save our life 
you redeem us. You redeem us from the place where we have actually no power to ever come close to you. It is through the blood of Christ. It is only through the blood of Christ that we can be cleansed. God, thank you that you know the reality that we're in. You know the nature of man. You know how we are so capable or thinking we're capable of doing things and gaining things and protecting and controlling things around us so that we are safe, so that we can be safe one day when we have to meet with you. But there is nothing we can do to rescue our life except placing our trust in you. Lord, I pray that you turn our life upside down. We think that our life is in control right now, but may we turn it upside down so that we, there's nothing else we realize that we have control over but yield our control to you. It's only when you come and change us, transform us, make things new, show us things that we've been holding on to so badly that will result to nothingness. Open our eyes to see the destruction, any one of us that we're heading to right now because of our sin. But turn our hearts to you and let you change us. God, we all come before you, whether we are believers or not believers yet. God, we all come to you to confess of our sin, of our sin. We are no better than anybody around us but except because of Jesus Christ's blood that cleanses from the inside out. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
Lord, we give our hearts to you. The Lord, I pray that you will go deep inside. We allow you to come deep into our hearts and our mind and really turn things around that from the inside of us eventually will grow, that our outside will be a reflection of our obedience to you, of our submission to you, even if we don't like it, but because you're Lord of all, Lord of all things of our lives, Lord of our own soul as well, because you are the one who redeemed us, and we got to give it all to you. But we need you to come and work in us, because we admit we cannot do it if the Spirit doesn't come and intervene. Show up in our lives, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. In 1954, Ben Gross, chair of the United Auto Workers Local Housing Committee and later Milpitas' first African-American mayor, helped create the first planned racially integrated community in the nation, Sunny Hills. Family residents, the Sunny Hills United Methodist Church, the Milpitas Post, state and federal government officials mutually supported this effort. They believed that Sunny Hills could be the light, the city on the hill for others to follow. There are churches in all sectors of our community, and when Malpitas was first formed, I think that was what created the foundation for a, a great city that has a, a conscience, a moral conscience. Malpitas is a city which is founded 
with a multitude of people from different experiences and backgrounds. And our community is one that prides itself on embracing others, regardless of their beliefs, their backgrounds, their races. We are here for each other. I think in Milpitas we're very fortunate because we have a really, really good relationship with the community and we have a lot of support from the community. In 1829, Sir Robert Peel had nine principles of policing. And amongst them, one of them was that the police are the community and the community are the police. And it seems if you look around all throughout the nation that that message has been lost. But here in Milpitas, it hasn't. It's still very, very much the case. Recently, the Milpitas National Day of Prayer demonstrated the foundational gift of this city of diversity and unity as leaders came together from all over the city to pray for and to bless our community. We're going to celebrate the National Day of Prayer. This is prayer's been going across America all day. We're letting our requests and prayers be known to God on behalf of the city of Milpitas in so many different areas. Father, for every parent, God, that has cried themselves to sleep, for every parent that's ever worried how they were going to make it financially, Lord, how they were going to support their family, I speak the name of Jesus, the name that's above all names. Those in our community that are struggling just to get by, struggling for housing, for those that are desperate for mercy and compassion, your compassion, Lord God. Oswald Chambers said that prayer doesn't prepare us for the greater work, prayer is the greater work. And that's why prayer is so important. I've seen uh, prayer happen uh, every single day uh, here in Milpitas. Um, we are among uh, worshipers here in town. And prayer is something that we can all connect with. We connect with it through our heart and through our souls. And so prayer is very much alive in establishing Milpitas as a model for the nation. Nothing happens without prayer. When we cry out to Jesus, mountains move. We must continue to pray for our city and the hearts of its people. Milpitas has the foundation that our valley and nation need, a gift to reconcile diverse groups of people to live together in peace and harmony. A city on a hill with justice, love, compassion, and unity. Let's join our leaders and build upon this foundation through prayer and engagement. Come help us shine the light and be a beacon of hope. Milpitas is still a work in progress to fulfill the dream that Dr. Martin Luther King once challenged our nation to have, where all of God's people can live together in peace and harmony. Would you join us as we seek to make Milpitas that shining city on a hill? where that dream can be fulfilled and people can be blessed and God can be glorified. Good morning and uh, welcome to uh, Silicon Valley Alliance Church. Uh, so glad to see uh, everyone joining us uh, either uh, in person or at, at home. And I do want to welcome uh, especially those that are uh, joining us for the very first time. I know in our midst uh, we have uh, Kylie visiting us from uh, Cal State uh, East Bay. So do uh, <laughs> welcome her uh, afterwards. Um, want to highlight a, a few important announcements. Uh, we do have our annual missions conference coming up on October 15th to the 17th. And because of the sensitive nature of uh, the field that they're going to be uh, sharing about, uh, we do welcome or ask that you would uh, come to uh, listen to these messages uh, in person because they will not be available on streaming uh, or online. Uh, so on October uh, f uh, 15th, which is a Friday, uh, it's going to be here at 8 p.m., it's going to be in English and Mandarin. Uh, on Saturday, we have a special uh, session uh, in the morning at 11 a.m. That's going to be in English uh, only. And then again, Saturday night at 7 p.m. is going to be in English uh, and Cantonese. And then on Sunday, uh, they're going to be uh, sharing uh, at 9.30 during the English worship as well as the 
uh, English and Mandarin, uh, as well as in English and Mandarin at uh, 11, uh, 15. And then for those that were are going to be worshiping uh, online, uh, there will be uh, something separate that, you, that you're able to uh, experience some, uh, some of the mission messages uh, as well. Um, do we want to remind you that uh, we do have a missions uh, pledge form that you can uh, uh, fill out uh, online. Um, and then also continue to pray for the nominating committee uh, process. Uh, we do have a, a insert uh, in your bulletin. Uh, please uh, uh, fill that out by uh, October uh, 10th. And then we are uh, opening up or reopening up our uh, parking lot fully. Uh, so you can park anywhere that you want. And also uh, as we exit uh, after service today, we will not, no longer be going through uh, the doors on the right hand side but you guys will be going through the same doors that you entered in uh, this morning so let's join our hearts as we uh, pray uh, together uh, for our lord god um, we we worship you you are uh, this amazing uh, uh, father uh, you are the god of abraham uh, isaac uh, jacob and we know that you are the same yesterday today and tomorrow you never uh, sleep you are uh, faithful, uh, you are trustworthy, you are uh, almighty, you are worthy of all our, our, our worship. And we do pray for not only our city uh, here, but also our surrounding uh, communities uh, as well. We pray, Lord, that, uh, that, that the leaders that are uh, uh, leading a lot of things that are going on, that you would give them uh, honesty, uh, humbleness, uh, integrity, uh, whether or not they, they know you or not, but Lord, we know that you've put them uh, in a place of authority uh, for a certain reason, and we pray, Lord, that you would uh, use them uh, in, in a mighty way. And we pray, Lord, as your, as your people, that we would be light uh, in our communities uh, as well, especially in Milpitas, where you have uh, placed us. We pray, Lord, that this would not just be a, a building, a place where we just come to worship, but may people... When they, when, they, when they walk by, when they drive by, when they see the things that we are uh, doing here, may they know that you are the mighty God uh, whom we worship. May they see uh, our lives uh, that are going to be you know, evident by um, just the way that we you know, love other people, the way that we show uh, compassion, the way that we have hope even during uh, difficult times. Um, and and, and may, our, may our lives be characterized by, by all of these uh, different things. And so, Lord, as we uh, come before you, we do just pray that you would transform uh, this area. May you bring renewal uh, to this place, place where we know people don't know you, uh, where we know uh, there is a lot of uh, a sin uh, that's, uh, that's going on. There's a lot of um, uh, a, just a sense of a hopelessness uh, that people uh, may have as they as they as they live here, and so Lord, uh, we know that by our own strength we're unable to do much. But Lord, we know that you are able to do great things uh, in our city and in this area. So Lord, we pray that you would move mightily uh, around here, and we pray, Lord, for many of us who might also be uh, just experiencing a lot of uh, just challenging. Uh, um, uh, moments uh, in our lives, and we pray, Lord, that uh, that you would remind us that you are, um, you know, our Father, that you love us, that you uh, never forsake us, and may you give us uh, the health, the security, the safety that we do not deserve. Uh, but Lord, we turn to you uh, because we know that you are always there uh, for us. And so, Lord, as we just come before you. Uh, this morning. May we experience more and more uh, of your mercy and grace, not only in our lives, but also uh, in our relationships uh, and in the places that we live uh, as well. And uh, Lord, we know that according to your word, uh, that we are uh, told to give our first fruits to you. And so Lord, we want to honor you uh, with our offering. Uh, may it be uh, a sweet time of uh, worship, uh, for, you know, for you. Uh, may we, may you use the the money uh, to uh, to just really 
uh, expand your kingdom here so that more and more people would know uh, your great name. And so, Lord, we again just thank you for uh, just all the blessings that you've given uh, to us. And may you continue to uh, extend um, um, the true hope that can only be found uh, in you. Lord, so we are just really grateful to be able to come together and worship you this morning. We praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Lord, I um, just want to turn the time to uh, uh, Pastor Casey as he's going to be uh, preaching the word. And you will see uh, how Christ is all is going to be different from all to Christ or similar. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ori. <clears throat> About uh, a year, actually exactly uh, a year ago, uh, next s Saturday, October 16, uh, we started the food pantry uh, ministry. And at the time, we just felt that uh, that is a great need. So we began to explore different options and God opened this door for us. And uh, the next thing you know, is already one year passed by. And we have uh, witnessed many of God's uh, grace and little that we know, as we uh, reach out to the community, God is doing remarkable things also in the city of uh, Milpitas. And the video that you uh, saw, I received it uh, just a uh, few days ago. And uh, so it is a, a great opportunity. And uh, just uh, continue to pray. And uh, we want to maximize uh, on this opportunity. So thank you for your support. Uh, whether you come to help or you pray for us or you give, uh, these are uh, very important. And uh, let's pray for revival uh, for the city of uh, Milpitas. As we continue on in this uh, series, uh, All to Christ, today, uh, as you read uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 17, at the end, you see this line. It says that Christ is all. And I found myself uh, into this uh, familiar uh, pattern as I read these passages, I, be, I, I found myself agreeing with it. But at the same time, I asked myself, is Christ all? How is Christ all in my life? And often that gives me a very different uh, picture. So this morning as we uh, get into uh, these uh, uh, not so long passages, uh, we just want to uh, ask this question. Yes, Christ is all intellectually for all of us, but is Christ all? How is Christ all in your life? Colossians chapter 3, verse, verses 5 to 11, it began with this very important word that we often ignore. Therefore, every time when you read the word therefore, Yes, you can continue on and just don't pay attention to it and uh, keep on reading. But if you really trace back, I think you will have the context uh, fully and you can enjoy the passage or understand the passage a lot better. So when you have this, therefore, you have to read back. And I just want to uh, remind you, actually, you cannot go back just the last uh, four verses. You have to go all the way to the last paragraph in chapter 2. And so I give you a little bit of a, a pictorial uh, thing. So something is missing, right? Uh, uh, chapter 2 ends with uh, verse 23, but it should not jump all the way to uh, chapter 3, verse 5. What about chapter 3, uh, verses 1 through 4? That is the passage that we actually covered last time. So it says that uh, since you die with Christ to the elemental spiritual uh, forces of this world, why as though you still belong to the world? Do you submit to its rule? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Christ is all, but is Christ all? And as Paul continued, he wrote these rules which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom, attractive, with uh, their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their uh, a harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. And then because of this, based on these foundational verses, 
Paul continued on to say that put to death, therefore, and he continued. But as I said, that is another portion before we get to uh, chapter 3, verses 5 to 11. So since, or therefore, in this case, this since is like therefore. So this is actually the uh, first of the two, since or therefore. It talks about since then, you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you die and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. So again, uh, this uh, few verses, it is kind of unusual because Paul normally talks more about death death to herself. But in this juncture, he actually focuses on uh, uh, how we live. This life, we, are, we, we actually live, if you go to Galatians 2, Paul talks about, it's not I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the passage today is actually the second, therefore. Because of the foundational uh, experience or identity that we have experienced in Christ, outlined in chapter 2, verses 20 to 23, we continue on. And Paul asks us to do two things, and then he wrapped all these things up with another kind of a reasoning or, or uh, another uh, reminder of our identity in Christ. So here you can see very clearly Four things, or maybe three things. Put to death, read yourself, and put on the new self. If you're writing a paper, two negative and one positive. But in order for to have uh, the positive in verse 10 to happen, the two negatives has to happen. And again, as you look at it, it is not difficult to uh, understand. As the Bible talks about put to death, therefore, based on what we experience based on the identity that we have in chapter 2 verses 20 to 23 we ought to put to death whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality impurity lust evil desire and greed which is idolatry because of this the wrath of god is coming so it's very simple very direct but the problem with this uh, uh, type of uh, uh, teaching, sometimes I feel that uh, the longer you are the follower of Christ, we cultivated this kind of attitude, I call it a dismissal attitude when we read this Bible. I don't know about you, but uh, <clears throat> as I read these few verse, uh, very short verses, before I even finish, I began to dismiss everything. And as I continue on reading, with this dismiss, dismissal uh, attitude, one thing jumps out. It ends with idolatry. It ends with idolatry, idolatry. When we think that we are actually better, we don't have problem with uh, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil, evil desires, and greed. But can we say the same with idolatry? So to me, I think this is not an exhaustive list of uh, earthly nature, but assemblary list. Idolatry is uh, the, the issue that we all wrestle with. What is idolatry? So here, I want to submit to you, we, we need to put to death according to, to Paul, because idolatry is closer than you think. You cannot dismiss this teaching. Every time when you put yourself just ever, ever, uh, ever so uh, lightly above Christ, above God, you are guilty of idolatry. So it is not very distant from you. And the other perspective is that this is internal. When you read this passage in context, Paul began with internal. This is not only uh, in alignment with uh, the Chinese philosophy, but this is actually a very consistent teaching of the Bible. 
the writing of this of, of God's word is not for you to hold it on someone else's head and, and, and hit it on the head. When you read the Bible, it's for you. And I know sometimes we get into this kind of attitude that uh, we are listening sermon for others. Even now, when you hear these words, sometimes you go like, uh, I wish so and so is here. This person needs to hear this. The Bible is never meant for you to do that. It is meant for you, for us as individual. Are there any idolatry in your life? Yes, maybe because we are Chinese, we are a little bit more conservative. So we are not wild and crazy like most people. But sometimes as simple as what is going on on TV now or maybe in half an hour. Because of the convenience of uh, these mobile devices, even in worship, sometimes we have a hard time to contain ourselves, to focus on God. We wonder how is that game. We wonder uh, what is uh, going on in the world. And sometimes very quickly, we even, for better or for worse, replacing God in the worship with pastor, with speakers. So put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. You start with you. This is internal. Because without dealing with yourself, your ego, it is very hard for you to go on. So after Paul dealt with our internal issue, he went on to the second thing. He asked us, he asked us to read ourselves with the interpersonal thing. So internal first, then interpersonal. And you look at all these things. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Filthy language, I don't think it's confined to just uh, uh, the what we normally call four-letter words. It's just any words, any language that is not edifying. And often, we don't speak it out loud. But inside, we have many, many of those words. Anger, rage. Yes, when you lost it, you display anger. But what about when you are composed? Are you not angry? What about malice, slanders? How often, how often we rationalize a loss of the uh, conversation behind certain peoples? And then we even make it sound uh, okay by saying that I don't want to slander and then we went on. Read yourself. So sinning against one another is easier than you think. You know, <clears throat> we are actually working on uh, the series for uh, uh, next year and we probably will open 2022 with uh, this series on unity. Preliminary, we are leaning toward the cause of unity. Often we talk about unity. But do we know what unity is? Are we willing to pay the price to attain unity? Then you go and you read the Gospel of John. Starting from uh, chapter 12 or chapter 13, all the way to about uh, maybe 17, 18. You read. The one single concern Jesus had before he went on to the cross is what? That we may not get along. So we start with internal and this putting death to whatever inside us will allow us, enable us to also have a better interpersonal relationship especially in the world that we live in today. 
There is no authority except for one. That is you. We rest so much because information is so accessible to all of us. And everybody become an expert in every single field. And when we come together to uh, have fellowship, supposedly, we argue, we disagree to a point that uh, my opinion is the most important, I is the most important. But you need to internally put to death on the earthly desire or earthly natures. And you, you need to reach, rid yourself of anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. And do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. And the third thing is that we are to put on the new self. This is actually very easy to understand. Paul likes to use this concept like uh, you're changing something, changing uh, uh, your clothes. Because we live in this uh, tainted world, so you have to remember one thing. This changing, putting off the old self and putting on the new self is a constant thing. Salvation is once for all as we celebrate Communion today. What Christ has done for us is once and for all. But as you go through uh, life uh, every day, this putting off the old and putting on the new is a daily thing. It's a constant thing. Whatever you put on will get dirty. Whatever you put on, the new one, the new clothing, the, the, the new clothing that you like so much, will be tainted. So this is a co continuous thing. Internally, we need to put to death our earthly nature. And interpersonally, we need to uh, be careful how we interact with one another. Upholding not how you feel, not holding not what you believe, but holding on to what Christ expects of you and me. And this is a constant thing. Put on the new self. And victory is more attainable, attainable than you think. So this is not hard. It is hard when you want to do it yourself. When you want to force yourself to not get angry, not to uh, slander, not to uh, uh, speak evil of someone else. That's why in the beginning I asked this very simple question, Christ is all, but is Christ all? in your life. We need to come before the Lord and bow before Him. Then it is very important, this is also another thing that I think we need to uh, uh, learn very much. After all these things, and I thought it was really interesting when Paul talks about putting on the new self, just like the way he talks about this uh, uh, put, put to death the uh, earthly nature he likened the earthly nature, all this uh, immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and, and things like that, to idolatry. Here, as he closed this uh, a portion of the scripture, he likened this putting on the new self to the Garden of Eden. The, in, the original intended purpose of God's creations of you and me. When we put on this new self, we are being renewed in knowledge in the image of His Creator. And this fact, or maybe we call this a salvation, a gospel, is for what? Is for whom? It is very important for us to remember this. As Christ, as God is providing this opportunity for us. It is only through God's amazing provision we can put out this monthly evangelistic article since last October. We have a, a, we have a, a person from a district office in Sacramento, and then we have someone I don't even know from a San Francisco. And one of our members in Hong Kong helping us 
to produce this four language four languages uh, article every month why we have to remember every time when you receive that article in your hands yes you can only understand one of the four or maybe two of the four but it is very important for you to remember there are people coming to our parking lot that need Jesus as we begin to uh, remind our, our volunteers every month that men shall not live by bread alone they need Jesus and all these things putting to death the internal success that you can uh, 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 overcome this earthly nature thing and to rid yourself with all this uh, bad thing and to put on the new self is for everyone I know you agree with that but you need to internalize it you need to become so-called colorblind here there is no Gentile or Jew circumcised or, or uncircumcised barbarian I don't know how to pronounce that word even though I have a little bit of a Greek background slave or free it doesn't matter whether you know <clears throat> this particular culture or not maybe you're like me you cannot even pronounce their name but you have to know not just agree there is no Gentile or Jews races doesn't matter circumcised or uncircumcised your spiritual condition doesn't matter barbarian civilization is, doesn't matter slave or free economic status social status doesn't matter it matter but it doesn't matter before Christ for Christ it all is all and is in all of the above Christ is all for Gentiles and for Jew Christ is all for circumcised and uncircumcised Christ is all for barbarian and the word that I cannot pronounce is slave or free Christ is all but is Christ all in you let's have a moment of uh, silence as we prepare our heart to receive communion let's pray that God allow us to also again not just agree because you have already agreed for a long time to truly see beyond ourselves beyond a culture beyond a church Christ's body is not just broken for you Christ's blood is not just shed for you and this victory this easily attaining victory is attainable when we are willing to surrender to Christ and as we pray we're going to uh, respond in this uh, familiar hymn very simple hymn we will, we will only sing uh, verses uh, one and chorus it says all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love him and trust him in his presence daily live and I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all I grew up singing this song every Sunday during offering so my word every time when I heard this song I have this overtone like uh, you give all your money but actually it's more than that you give your all are you willing to surrender all if you're not Christ is all in theory not in your life let's sing this together all to Jesus I surrender mm -hmm. Jesus, I surrender. 
surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. Day. heart now at the foot of the cross as we are holding this bread and the cup reminding us of what Christ has surrendered for you and me and let's in our own quiet prayer we also responded to Jesus that I, not we, but I, surrender all. And the all including you, the most important I. All to Jesus, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. As we continue on preparing for the communion, the passage is before you. You can continue to reflect on that as we prepare ourselves. If you need uh, the element, please uh, raise your hand and we'll hand one to you. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave thanks. And reminding us that uh, this is his body's sacrifice broken for us. Let's partake this with a grateful heart. Together, let's partake. What Paul asks us to put to death and to read for ourselves are the things that the Bible clearly calls sin. And the biggest sin is we live according to us and not Christ. But this is a cup of hope, for without the shedding of the blood, there will be no forgiveness. Let's partake this understanding that Christ's blood has shed for you and me. So not only we can be forgiven, we find strength to deal with sin. Let's partake together. And let's pray. Father, we thank you once again for your truth. I simply pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us to ask this question. Christ is all, but is Christ all? How is Christ all? Lord, may you help us to put to death the earthly natures internally. And interpersonally, Lord, I just pray that you help us to proactively, not only expecting others to do it, but proactively we all do it together. That we want to rid anything, anger, malice, or whatever, that may drive us apart. 
And Lord, help us constantly, daily, to put off the old self and to put on the new self. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's rise together for doxology. Praise God. the benediction. May, may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son be with us in truth and in love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. You are dismissed after a moment of silence. Remember exiting through uh, the front door. And uh, just want to remind you, uh, Choose Why Prayer Meeting is today online at 2 p.m. So please join us. We do need you to stand with us. Thank you very much.